Howdy, uh, this is Kevin Stoda, and I, welcome to the Kevin Stoda channel. I'm going to share with you some points from uh, Jim Hightower. I, since I lived in Texas uh, 20 years ago, I've been listening to Jim. Uh, he's the son of a former Senator Hightower, and he talks the talk. He uh, got a national syndicated program, the Hightower Report, and I want you to get to know him through his own words so I'm just going to share those right now okay uh, here's a, Jim's an action agenda for the time of COVID here are some ideas they're bold enough to meet today's challenges he says we can find our way out of the mess Jim says he says laissez-faire ideologue Ronald Reagan delighted in mocking the very idea that government should provide health protection food aid income support or other public assistance to people in need. The Gipper derided big government as both a hopeless bungler and an insatiable beast that devours individual freedom. The nine most terrifying words he said in English are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. He equipped in 1986, the line was surefire crowd pleaser. Uh, winning applause and guffaws from those who bought into his demagogic warnings about creeping socialism. I think the whole military industrial complex is a socialist system, uh, myself, and I'd say if you're going to call anybody socialist, it'd be one to build a military industrial complex bigger and bigger blindly every year. Anyway, now, however, uh, comes our strange spring of COVID-19 this year, and us guffawing at stale jokes about big bad government have suddenly been drowned out by anxious and angry cries bursting from practically every zip code in our land where the hell is our government uh, it turns out that the right-wing socialist boogeyman is far less terrifying even the right-wingers even two right-wingers I mean then the absence of actual socialism when you need it for example give us test kits we need masks hospital beds ventilators safe hospitals when we will there when will there be a vaccine when will there be a safe workplace? Our income is gone. We need assistance, bailouts, debt relief. Who's in charge here? Help! This is, uh, these are a good set of questions by Jim Hightower. I suggest you begin to recalculate the memories that your parents and grandparents pasted on your m brain about uh, Ronald Reagan being a wonderful thing and his uh, line of government thinking, uh, bringing us just uh, the best American experience ever. No, I grew up in this uh, last 50 years uh, from the 70s onward and I've experienced uh, no income increase really for most workers my age and uh, in my working class and teaching class experience. Uh, recalculating, recalculate the myths, get rid of the myths, get them out of there and really calculate. How did we ever find ourselves uh, around the world with our GPS devices? They plot a route right to our destination, complete with a disembodied but authoritative voice telling us where to turn. There was that time though when if you took a wrong turn, the voice would say with a little sigh, recalculating as its computer searched to get you back on the right path. That was actually kind of helpful. I don't hear it that much anymore. An unexpected and profound impact of today's horrific uh, coronavirus crisis is that it is prompting a society-wide recalculation of the rocky road or nation uh, power elites have put us on. The rocky road we've been on for nigh 50 years, maybe even 100 years, uh, since uh, the people began fighting against a, a new deal back in the 30s. An unexpected and profound impact of today's horrific coronavirus is uh, asking you to recalculate. Here we are, a fantastically rich, ostensibly democratic country filled with smart, creative people who together have unlimited potential. And yet Trump and the suck-ups around him are so small-minded, incompetent, out of touch and uncaring that they were unprepared for and discombobulated by a virus that scientists warned months and years ago that could spawn in a, a pandemic. Uh, this is hardly the first time we've seen a calamitous uh, failure by the powers that be 
to respond to America's people's urgent public need. Uh, just think of um, Hurricane Katrina, for example, exposing the establishment to your on your own ethical bankruptcy. And who can forget watching the stunning colonists of Trump in 2017 as he coldly threw rolls of paper towels at victims of Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. But far more expansive than the, those regional horrors, the ravages of the COVID-2019 directly and personally affect nearly everyone everywhere in multiple devastating ways. Mass death and economic collapse have a way of focusing public attention, right? Not only prompting anger, but leading people to question the morality of the system itself. And those in charge can't simply gloss over the societal breakdown with blame shifting, but covering press conferences and tweets. Not can the, the obvious failure of today's politocratic policies be covered up by ideological assurance that the old free market magic will soon restore normalcy. Uh, we're just going to hit a bottom sometime in the next couple months, I think, and it will have to go up. And then the Republicans are going to say, wonderful, we're making everything better. Well, we're, most of us are hit pretty hard and we expect a better system when this, all, this year is done than what we were given coming into 2020. For about a decade, American zeitgeist has been steadily shifting from resigned acceptance of the anti-democratic corporate order that dominates in America, the abject failure of that system to cope or initially even address the deadly pandemic, along with the aloof arrogance of the system's profiteers, again, Trump's friends, has jolted open the minds of a huge swath of the general public to the reality that we don't matter too much here. We don't matter to them. Need a respirators? we all should just compete against each other to pay the hyperinflated market price. That's how America works, says the president, but the times they are changing. Again, I'm reading from Jim uh, Hightower's uh, Hightower Lowdown, May 2020. Uh, start with public perceptions of the social safety net, long belittled by anti-government ideologues as extravagant giveaways of tax-funded benefits to undeserving layabouts. But many are now waking up to see that a strong, responsive public health system is not a wasteful welfare for them, but an essential investment in us and our common good. Yeah, let's think about us and our common good. People who never before needed food stamps, Medicaid, or unemployment checks are finding themselves in need and in line personally experiencing the system's extravagance. Also. The concept of dependency has been liberated from the right-wing canard that diabolical government programs victimize participants, hooking them on free things and sapling their self-reliance and moral strength. Instead, the COVID contagion has brought home that we're interdependent beings. All of us are depending on collectivist ethos that, that at the very least strive to keep each other disease-free Two, recognizes that an, on any given day, the most valuable people in society are not CEOs or billionaires, Walmart financiers, etc., but underpaid nurses, grocery clerks, EMS responders, food bank staffers, home health aides, delivery workers, immigration, immigrant laborers, and others on the epidemic's front lines. When you can't breathe or you, you run out of food for your family, you don't call your broker. Finally, and consider the meaning of big as in big government. Practically overnight, it has been elevated from the contemptuous connotation of an oozing bureaucratic blob to a meritorious adjective, adjective signifying big enough to do the job right. Big enough to do the job right. That's the kind of government we want, and we don't just want it taking care of the military folk. We want it in uh, military-dependent industries. Uh, yes, governments at all levels frequently do grow too big, too intrusive, and abusive. See last month's lowdown from Jim Hightower about this and uh, America's out of control war machine. This spring though, we're finding out what too small looks like. Constant cutbacks in public health resources, the rigid small-minded mentality that dominates both parties, and the corporate establishment's fierce determination to allow only incremental changes in public policy that have needlessly boxed us in to this full-blown coronavirus catastrophe. Those same forces of policy meekness 
are already pulling back on Washington's inadequate initial steps to stem the people's economic and health crisis. And health crises, even though the clear and present need is to think bigger, be bolder, and do more. All right, let's say that again. We need to be thinking about uh, what bigger and better plans to take care of us all can be done by the government or need to be done by the government because the um, system as constructed over the last 50 years is failing. Uh, we need to be bolder and do more for the poorest in our society. Okay, I'm going to uh, continue sharing uh, Jim.